Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the Simon Says card kit for January of 2019. So this is the stamp set, and it's called Snow Much, and it is absolutely adorable with the little snowmen and the little penguins. I love penguins. Um, and I am enjoying the font and the sentiment sizes on this. So let's get started to, with card one. So this kit came with all kinds of different things. Um, you know, all, other type of, of elements between the card stock and the little embellishments. So with this card here, I grabbed a piece of dark blue. It looks purple, but it's really a dark blue card stock. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment snow much. I do love that font. And I'm going to kind of put it towards the bottom. I'm going to use my Gina K white pigment ink, and I'm going to use my white recollections embossing powder to clean off the excess powder. Because of course I got a little carried away with that. I'm going to use my microfiber cloth and I find that works best on the inside of the card. I am going to stamp missing you. And I actually just recently got uh, Simon says stamp fine detail white. Um, I like my recollections and it says that it's detail, but when it comes to these little sentiments that I absolutely love that Simon says has, I do need a true fine detail. So I'm going through and, and trying a bunch. It's a reason to spend money. Okay. So I grabbed one of my Nouveau blending brushes, pulling back in my white pigment ink, and I'm just going back and forth across the top of this and making sure it's lighter and lighter as I go down because I want the dark blue to show. I want the top a little bit heavier with the pigment. So I'm going to, I have a mini blender dedicated to my white pigment. Like I do my vintage photo. No, no vintage photo for this. And then I'm using the brush just to smooth that out, to blend it out, pull it down just a little bit. So that's what our card looks like so far. I think it looks great so far. So I'm grabbing my glue and I'm going to put all of these glue dots all over the place. I think I actually show this all. So they're kind of big because one of the items that came in the kit were these snowballs <laughs> or okay. They're really pom poms. I think they're snowballs. <laughs> so my card will have the measles with white pom poms. So I'm going to place these all over. Now I'm going to put a lot of weight on this as it dries because I'm really not letting the pigment ink dry. So I need everything to seep through. So we've got acrylic blocks, we've got ink pads, and I let that set for about 15, 20 minutes. Now I like the white pom poms, but of course I wanted to add some more. <laughs> I really did have fun with this card. So I'm going to grab my white gel pen. Now the kit came with a gel pen and I believe it was a five. Um, the one that I'm using here is a 10 because I'm looking to have again, white, any type of pigment ink, they take longer to dry and I am impatient. So, um, with the size five pigment or white gel pen, it just wasn't getting onto the card. So 10 it is, and I added all kinds of dots and that's our first card. I like it. It's one of my favorites. So for card number two, I'm going to stamp this little image of the little snowman looking up. Now to save time, I am going to color him with my alcohol markers offline and I'm going to fussy cut him out. Now I do believe there is a die set available for this stamp set. And if, as always, it will always be linked down below. So once I get this fussy cut out, I'm going to set that aside because then I want to work on the tag. Now in the kit came these very smooth black tags. I love tags. So I'm going to grab my vintage photo and I want to put that around the hot chocolate is like a hug from the inside. So that came from the pattern paper that came with the kit and I just cut the block out. I'm not worried too much about, um, 
trimming the edges or curving the edges on that sentiment quite yet. I'm going to use the ink that's on my mini blender and I'm going to put some towards the bottom and towards the top of my tag and then coming in with the blending brush just to blend that out a little bit. Now to help that I'm going to put some of the ink on the brush so that I can blend that down. And again it's just to smooth out that harsh line from the mini blender. Once that's done I'm going to prop up the sentiment using my double-sided foam tape and I'm just going to set that in place and of course I'm going to put it on an angle um, not straight on and then I will trim off those two edges once that's done I have some red and white twine and I'm just going to cut a piece double it up and that's going to be the tassel that comes off of my tag. I was thinking on doubling, doubling, but nah, we'll just do it once. I'm going to put a knot at the top of it, and I did keep this pretty long because I wasn't quite sure where it was going to actually sit on the card. That little snowman is going to come right off of the corner there, and I'm going to use both double sided foam squares and also liquid glue because he's going to come off of the red sentiment so I just want to make sure that he stays even the liquid glue that I'm using is my art glitter glue um, in a container that I got off of Amazon I'm going to be using one of the pre-scored pre-cut cards and of course my liquid glue felt the need to explode there that's okay we're still good and I'm going to set the tag right onto that card base making sure that the snowman is sitting straight I didn't want him to be kind of looking like he was falling backwards um, so the tag is going to lean towards the right and I'm going to grab a micro glue dot to set my um, tag tassel into place <clears throat> To help just brighten up the background, I'm going to grab one of the little X's, uh, little X stamps from the uh, stamp set, and I'm going to use my white pigment ink and just do a small design on the background. So kind of, you can still make up your own pattern paper after the fact, um, after you've put your focal point on, just keep your focal point there, of course, and then just stamp around it. It'll be great. So again, for card number three, we save time. I used my colored pencils to color in these two uh, snowmen. Absolutely love my colored pencils. And this is a piece of Simon Says masking paper. And I'm going to, as I threw that across, I'm going to set this down onto a small panel that I have cut down I did not die cut it. I cut it down to three and a quarter by four inches. So I'm going to cover the bottom because I want to have a hill, a snowy hill, and I'm going to come in with my tumble glass oxide and I'm going to make sure that it's darker towards the top and gets lighter towards the bottom. I am also, once I remove the mask, I'm going to use my distress sprayer to spray some uh, water onto this panel and lift it up. I am going to use my heat tool, <clears throat> excuse me, I am going to use my heat tool a little bit just to uh, dry that. I thought I did it long enough, I didn't, but that's okay, I like the effect I got. So grabbing my VersaFine ink, I'm going to use the sentiment, Snow Much Thanks. And I'm going to stamp that towards the top, but in the center. Um, so I have my snowman placed where I want them. And then I'm going to stamp down. Now I want to use my clear embossing powder to set that. 
Now, what I'm realizing, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm realizing is, is as I'm putting this clear embossing, the, the distress ink was not dry yet, or it, the paper was still damp because of the water that I sprayed onto it. I just went with it because it wasn't a solid coating, and I thought it added some great texture to the card um, and some interest when you turn it to the side. It didn't mess anything up. I cut down a piece of fun foam, and now I'm using my two inch film tape, cutting two pieces down, one for the front, one for the back, so that I can adhere it onto my panel so that it can go onto my standard size, A2 size card base, which for all of these cards is a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding. Once I have that in place, I'm going to set my two snow people. It could be Mr. or Mrs. It could be a him and a her. It could be anything we want. <laughs> I love these little snowmen. Um, I'm a snowman fan. I'm also a snowflake fan when it comes to the winter or Christmas cards. So having snowmen and colored pencils, it's an awesome combination. So the one is a little bit larger than the gentleman with the top hat. Um, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my C3 Copic, and I'm just going to add a little bit of shading underneath each of them so that they doesn't look like that they're flying in the air on the snow mound. And that is our third card. Fourth card is very simple. Um, if you like using pattern paper, um, and you do have some like edge dies, you can certainly do this. So I just grabbed two pieces of cardstock and I've cut them down, but I also have a panel that's already cut to be four and a quarter by five and a half, or excuse me, a scant four and a quarter by five and a half. Again, what does scant mean? Scant is cut just under four and a quarter, um, probably about four and an eighth and a just under five and a half, which would probably be five and three eighths. Once I have that panel adhered to the first pattern paper, I'm going to use my long shears and trim that. I found this uh, scalloped border dye in my stash. It's amazing what you can find when you can, when you clean. Yes. Or when you do a video showing everything. So I'm going to take that now that I have that cut out and I chose this pattern paper here because of all the sentiments. Now you don't have to use another sentiment. You could go with the bottom. It's kind of says it all. I did want to use the winter hello up on the top. So I was debating, should I use just my stamp block or should I use my stamp positioner? I do decide to use my stamp positioner just to make sure um, that I do have a solid impression with my Versamark ink onto this panel. I'm just going to set that bottom panel in place just to see to make sure I have the sentiment where I want it. And I'm going to pull in my, I'm sorry, not my Versamark ink, my white pigment ink. And I'm going to stamp that just a couple of times to make sure that I have good coverage with the ink. I do need a new chamois. Ooh, pretty bad, but it still works. Wash it all the time. I'm going to use my fine detail embossing powder again, and then I'm going to heat set that uh, with my heat tool. Once it's all melted, I'm going to come in with my microfiber cloth just to clean off the extra powder. And this bottom panel here, I am going to prop up using my double-sided foam tape. Um, once that's covered, I'm going to adhere that right down to the bottom and then trim off the side that's to the right. I do go over just a little bit just to make sure that it is covering my panel. I'm going to make sure that this is laying flat and I'm going to adhere this to my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. I was thinking about using one of the pre-scored ones in the blue. Eh, mm -mm. Didn't look right. I mean, and it did because one of the fonts is very close to that color, but for some reason it just didn't look right to me. 
I chose to use my tape runner this time to adhere this panel to the front of my card base. And then I'm going to grab my um, white gel pen. Now one came in the kit and this is a size five. It was really a fine point and I wasn't getting good coverage. I, I have to break it in. At least I find with gel pens, I have to break them in. Um, so I grabbed the one that I already had and this is a size 10 and I'm just accenting some of the letters in some of the words. Makes sense, right? Um, yeah, I just thought about that. So the larger fonts within that panel, I'm just adding some highlights here and there throughout those letters. Um, maybe a few dots. I'm then going to grab my aqua shimmer pen. This is the clear one and I'm going to add some shimmer to some areas. So to this coffee mug and to the banners on the bottom and the top to the swirls um, just to give it something a little bit different to that base. Now again, you can just leave it to the um, to the cardstock itself and it would be just fine. Remember, you don't even have to use the sentiment winter hello because you have all of those words onto that piece of paper. So for the final card, I'm not sure if this one's my favorite or if the first one's my favorite, but this one's coming close. Pulled out this absolutely adorable penguin and my versifying ink. I am truly a fan of the versifying ink. I'm dangerous with it because I get it all over the place, but there is nothing that gives me a black print like this does. It's, it's amazing. So I have my panel. I used my lawn fawn stitch rectangle to cut this out and it's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I'm going to go to town around the edge and stamp this with five penguins. So I'm going to have two on the bottom, one on the left hand side and two in the upper right hand corner. The sentiment that I'm eventually going to use is there's snow one like you. So while these are drying, I'm carefully using my Prismacolor pencils and I all, the only thing I'm coloring on these little guys is their nose. So I am using an orange and then I'm going to come in with an orange red just to give it some shading along the side. Now there's one more penguin that I want to stamp. Now this is where I, you know, was going to the right. I decided to go left. At first I stamped it in my Knight of Navy Stampin' Up ink because I do love the Stampin' Up inks. They always give me a solid impression, except for the black. It's very odd. So it changed my mind. I want to go with a black penguin. So I have him set there. Now I'm going to real quick color in his nose so that I can get that out of the way. So again, the sentiment is going to be there's snow one like you. So if you have seen my videos or seen any of my past sentiments really jump out at me. Um, they're very inspiring. They kind of give me ideas. It's kind of where the card goes sometimes, most of the time. So I stamped a penguin onto a piece of the Simon says masking paper and I want to cut out the inside. Now here's a little tidbit. Make sure you stamped it on the right side. <laughs> Who knew? I, I know this one. It's not ink to do where they have a blue piece of paper. No, um, I just didn't check it and it's okay. It still works. Um, what I found is these images are not exact on each side and that's okay. So we're going to get the little tiny piece. I cut that out as well. So I'm just making sure I'm in the black line. That's all I have to do. I keep checking it, but that's all we have to do. So that's good now. And that's how it's going to sit. So now when I take, cause again, I stamped it on the wrong side. <laughs> it's white might <laughs> only me. 
and it was a small piece. It didn't have the paper break. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to set this down and I want to make sure that I have this piece of paper right up to the black edge. I don't want too much of the black showing. Now I know I've got a little bit, but that's just how this is going to sit and I'm okay with it. I'm going to grab all of the snowflakes from the stamp set and I want to I only want them stamped on the inside of his of the penguin. So I'm just going to place them around and thank God with the number that we had of snowflakes, I didn't have to stamp again. So I'm able to put these on one on a block all at once, stamp them all at once and we're good. So that makes my life very easy. Just make sure you don't pull up your masking paper. And if you do push it back down, I'm going to use my anti-static tool and I'm going to stamp the images. Now here's where I also messed up again. So not only did I stamp the image on the wrong side of the masking paper, which, okay, we realize it's not the same thing when you invert it. It's okay. So I'm going to stamp this image. Now what I should have done was I should have kept the masking paper on the penguin. I took it off first. I shouldn't have done that because it, and it's not that it's a problem, but what the embossing powder is sticking to, and I'm using silver, by the way, the embossing powder is sticking to the sticky residue, um, a little bit that's left behind. Plus I use pigment ink. So I've got a lot of dampness that's going on there that the embossing powder is just sticking to. So I grabbed my dry brush that I have um, in my cup next to me. And every time I'm lifting that up, I'm blowing on it to remove the loose embossing powder that I have. So I'm trying to get this back to black because I know I am not going to be able to match that. It just wasn't going to happen. So I'm going to real quick come in, use my heat tool, and I'm going to heat this little guy. So now he's got snowflakes just on his, you know, his belly area face stuff, the white part of the penguin. I'm going to fussy cut him out. Now I'm going to go right up to the black line. And then on the outside, I'm going to use my memento black pen. And I'm going to go around the edge just to make sure that I have all the black going all the way around. I'm going to set my sentiment. And again, I'm going to use my VersaFine black ink. And I'm just going to make that that set. Now I want that towards the upper left. And then I want this penguin to be propped up and I'm going to use my double sided foam to prop him up and he's going to fit perfectly in that space. You can see paper has two sides. It's an awesome thing. I save everything. It's addicting. Once these pieces are cut, <laughs> we're going to remove the release paper and set him in place. Now for this one, I did choose to use one of those pre-cut and scored card bases. Now those pre-scored card bases, they are side folding, um, but they are still four and a quarter by five and a half. I am going to use my liquid glue to set that in place. Um, and make sure that is adhered down. I'm going to make sure I have pressure and make sure I set the card right. Cause you know, I've done that where I forgot to set the card the way that I was supposed to. Here I was thinking about using some glossy accents. The kit did come with some glossy accents, but you know, I really liked the way it looked, I didn't want to add that. I am going to grab my white gel pen just to put some um, highlights in each of their eyes. And I am going to grab my shimmer pen so that I can add even more sparkle to the one that is the center of attention. And I'm just going to color in his whole white area. 
I don't want to say belly. Part of it, it's face. And that is card number five. So see, can't decide between five and one. I think they're both adorable. They're cute and different. As always, here are the close-ups of the five card from one kit that we did for Simon Says, January 2019 card kit. Just in case you're curious, this card kit will stay on for 2019, um, but again, it will stay as a five card one kit. All of the products that I used outside of the kit and even some of the ones that I did use from the kit will be listed down below. You will be able to click on those links and just get more information of those products. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I would love for you to subscribe and here are a couple more videos in case you want to see any of the other works that I have done recently or maybe a little bit in the past. I hope everyone has a great day and thank you so much for watching, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative.